Atlantic. Hey guys. Hello, hello, hello. Happy Monday. Another week. We are reunited again, my dears. I want to say hi to my mama, to my papa, to my sister, and to all of my family that watches. Um, okay. All right. So we are all shared out on uh, Facebook. Let's go to Instagram. Hey guys, hello, hello, hello. Let me see what picture this is. I I feel like that's Andrea. Who's that? Say hi so I can say hi to you. Uh Uh, Facebook, as you come in, please say hi because Facebook doesn't tell me who's watching uh, unless you, dang it, hey, J.A. Jo- Renegades, hey, hey, okay, I just realized what that said, okay. Hey guys, is this Andrea? I can't see. I think it is. It might be. I'm trying to see. They got. They put that little icon up at the top on Facebook and expect me to recognize that. Look, my eyes are bad. That's why I wear glasses. Um. All right. So as we get started, how y'all doing? How was your weekend? Um, I've got some great stories for you today. They're a little bit different than what we usually do. It's going to be, I I need, these are going to require you guys to kind of get in your philosophical bags. Hi, Sincere39. Um, yeah. Did you guys see the thing that I posted in my stories about the people, uh, the Hermes workers who got jail time y'all when i tell y'all about intellectual property i'm not kidding these people who work for hermes in france they were a part of some huge counterfeiting ring high re-educated for reparations they were part of some huge counterfeiting rings and they got hey trista hey trista um but yeah they got um they got years of jail time for counterfeiting uh, Hermes products. So when I tell y'all about intellectual property, I'm not kidding. Hey, Deirdre. All right. We got Trista. We got Deirdre. We got Sincere 39. We got Reeducated for Reparations. We got J.A. Renegades. I'm excited. Okay. Um, yeah. So. How was your weekends, guys? Did you guys do anything special? Um, I went to a friend's birthday celebration. It was socially distanced. I posted the picture of me looking all cute over the weekend. Um, one of the rare times. I think that's the first time I've really dressed up all quarantine. Um, but yeah. Uh, all right. So we're getting started in a minute. And then we're going to get the show started uh. Oh, oh. Remember to share this out at 805 to your friends. Um, let them in on the fun. Don't be selfish about it. You have a good time here. Let your friends have a good time too, all right? Sharing is caring. All right. So we've got, okay. People are coming in. I know y'all like to hop in at the last minute. Mm. Y'all didn't have any, nothing happened to you this weekend. I didn't see nothing. Y'all didn't say nothing about your weekends. That's okay. All right. We can talk about that later in the show, I guess. Okay. Oh, I'm tired, guys. I did an 11 hour day today, took a quick rest, and then got on here. So I need y'all's help to keep my energy up. All right. Need that from you guys today. All right. It's time to get started. I'm hitting the record button, all right? 
Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Monday. Welcome to NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Thursday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. Uh, if this is your first time watching or listening uh, and you're wondering who is this lady that I am hearing or who is this lady that I see on my screen, I'm Natalie Pierre-Lewis. I'm the host of the show and I'm the owner and operator of MPL Consulting LLC, a business formation firm. What that means is I help people like yourself get your business paperwork together. So things like getting your business registered with the state, making sure you have uh, appropriate contracts and operating agreements and partnership agreements, getting your EIN numbers and DUNS numbers and order, giving you basic brand protection strategies, helping you develop hiring policies that don't get you sued for discrimination. <laughs> um, I also provide contract review uh, services if you like, if you're trying to figure out what does this contract say, all of those foundational things that you need to be a confident business owner and understand what's happening around you legally and make sure that your business is, you know, formed on solid ground and not sinking sand. I help you do all of those things. If you're wondering why I'm qualified, I'm very happy that you asked. I'm a licensed attorney. I have been one for 14 years and counting with a specialization in business formation. I've started multiple businesses for myself and others, both online and offline. I've had many careers in the realms of entrepreneurship, the law, education, hospitality, and administrative support. And most important, I'm very passionate about making business and legal education as accessible to everyone as possible. Not everybody has the time, the money, or the desire to go to business school or to law school, but a lot of you have amazing business ideas, and if you're going to be successful, there's just some things that you need to know, all right? So that is where I come in. Now, if you would like to get in contact with me so we can get your business life together, I want you to go somewhere for me. I want you to go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm, uh, linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm, linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. There you are going to be able to book yourself a free 15 minute consultation if you are a first time client. You will also be able to download the free biz launch cheat sheet that will help you uh, uh, choose and start your dream business in seven days or less. And I'm telling y'all, the Biz Launch Cheat Sheet is not a joke. It's not just a piece of paper. I had somebody email me this weekend telling me that their LLC paperwork just came through. All they did was download the Biz Launch Cheat Sheet and follow my instructions. And they're already on their way to having their business established. So the Biz Launch Cheat Sheet is, you know, it's really helpful. So I really... um encourage you to download it if you have not done so already okay as well uh at linktree forward slash npl consulting firm you can subscribe to the youtube channel and the podcast where i have all of the episodes of this show um and yes oh and also at linktree forward slash npl consulting firm i do a lot of video training so for those of you who may not necessarily want to do one-on-ones with me i do have video training showing you how to apply for an ein number how to apply for a dunce number how to create a single member llc operating agreement um and also i have a protect your biz video training that takes you through the basics of intellectual property so you know how to you know guard your your trademarks and your copyrights out in these streets all right so uh, that is enough about me. Uh, just go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting for me. It'll tell you all you need to know. Let's move on to the show. The way that the show works is I pull stories from the news, stories from blog sites, stories that you guys send me, stories that I see wherever I find interesting, and I pull the ones that have um, that have lessons that we can learn as entrepreneurs and we discuss them, okay? So this is a time for all of us to get involved. This is a time for you to get your opinion heard. Don't be shy. As long as what you're saying is respectful, everybody's opinions and questions are welcome here, okay? Uh, so without any further ado, let us get started, okay? Now, uh, our first story of the evening um, has anybody ever gone to a pro bono legal clinic? Now, when I say pro bono, do we know what pro bono is? If you know what pro bono means, give me a one in the comments. If you don't know what pro, no, pro bono means, give me a two in the comments. Um, and while you do that, I'm just going to give people a quick lesson because I know not everybody knows. So a lot of, um, uh, uh, every state that you go to, they have legal resources for people who cannot afford a traditional attorney. Um, these are usually some type of legal aid service, uh, some type of nonprofit organization, 
thank you, Mika, you know what pro bono means. And they will, um, depending on what your issue is, they will provide you uh, legal help for free. That is what pro bono means. Thank you, Trista. All right. Okay. Now, uh, Deidre, okay, well, hopefully my exp explanation cleared it up for you. So even like when, when I have to renew my legal license, they, they have a section where you can donate to the pro bono legal fund so that, you know, they can continue to sustain that to help people who cannot afford, um, you know, traditional legal services, right? So now we understand what pro bono legal services are. This is where this case gets funny. So this is a little bit different than what we usually talk about. So there's this lady named Arena Chevaldina, right? She lives in Florida. Um, a while ago, she was, you know, she had some issues with her landlord and she started posting some things online, including some pictures that her landlord found unflattering. Uh, now, keep in mind, her landlord is a minority owner of the uh, basketball team, the Miami Heat, okay? Um, so after she post, uh, published all of these pictures and articles and things about her landlord and how much she didn't like him, um, this is in 2015, he sued her for copyright infringement. Not for the articles, but for the pictures. He basically said, girl, you put in my... You put in my pictures, oh, glad, Deidre. You're putting my pictures online, and I don't like it. You're using my image. So her landlord, Irina's landlord, tried to sue her for um, posting pictures of him, right? Um, now, Irina was like, I don't know what I can do. So she goes to this organization called Center for Individual Rights, right? Um, and I guess they agreed to represent her pro bono, which is supposed to mean free. Okay. But apparently in the, in their agreement, they said that it was pro bono and that she wasn't allowed. Uh, it was pro bono if she lost, but if she won, they would get a cut. That's what they're saying. Their agreement with her was right now, arena. She ended up settling this case for $10,000 for attorney's fees. We don't know what her whole award is, but we do know that the amount that she was awarded by the court for her attorney's fees was $10,000, right? Center for Individual Rights is suing Irina for $115,000 because they're saying that they never advised her to settle this case with her landlord. So they are trying to enforce a $100,000 and $15,000 uh, legal bill on her for their pro bono legal services. Now, we understand uh, we're moving past the copyright part, right? Yes, she posted pictures of her landlord and he tried he tried to claim copyright, but there was there was no copyright infringement because sir, it like these weren't pictures of you that that were legally protected, right? Um so this, uh, this, uh, legal aid society, they gave her tips here and there, but they never told her to settle the case, right? Arena, as she's, uh, as she's going through this, she's talking to, you know, different, uh, different sides and she decides, you know, I just want to get this over with. And she settled for $10,000, for attorney's fees. Now we don't know what she got personally, but we know that she got $10,000 for attorney's fees. And now this pro bono legal, uh, legal organization is trying to enforce a $115,000 legal bill on her. So I want to hear from you guys. Do you think that the center for individual rights is doing too much or are they just trying to recoup their money from defending this case, right? Um, now, me, as far as I know, and in my training as a legal professional, I've always known pro bono to be free. If you have some type of agreement where if you win, I get money, then it's no longer pro bono. It's a contingency agreement. You're basically saying, hey, I'll work for you for free unless you win something. But that's not the purpose for the Center for Individual Rights. Your purpose is to provide free legal services to those who cannot afford it. Now, 
We don't know how much time they spent on this case. Hey, Zephyrina. But we know they got $10,000, right? Now, Trista said they're absolutely doing too much. Why, as a pro bono legal organization, how are you justifying enforcing a $115,000 judgment against a woman who came to you because she didn't have the money for a traditional attorney? Um, well, Deirdre, it's not that they lost no money because as they are attorneys, they do have to spend their time on this. It does take man hours, but that is what you sign up for when you work for a pro bono legal organization. As far as I know, I've never worked for one, but you know, the, the work has to come in. The money has to come from somewhere right now. These organizations are usually, supported by donations from the state bar association and other things but very rarely are they trying to get money from the people the citizens the civilians that they are supposed to be helping um mika douglas moore said because she didn't understand the contract right it is a contract issue i don't understand how you're calling it a pro bono legal representation but you've put this contingency in the agreement that if she wins money she has to give you some um uh, Trista Bradford said, if they insist on this judgment, I would sue them for misrepresentation of services. Yes, girl. I love it. I love that. Right. Because it, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Now they're saying be, that the reason that they're trying to enforce this is because they never advised her to settle, uh, to settle for $10,000. Now, um, when you are an attorney for someone, you are essentially a hired gun right? That's what they teach us in law school. What's one of the things that you are? You're a counselor, you're a hired gun, you are a zealous defender, right? But as a hired gun, you can only shoot when your client tells you to. So I don't know if you've ever watched the court cases where, um, you know, attorneys are trying to, to, to settle something or get a plea bargain with their clients and they have to bring the offer to their clients and the clients refuse and the attorneys are like, this is a good deal. You need to take it, right? You can hammer your client all they want, but at the end of the day, it is what the client wants. So the, uh, in, in my opinion, the Center for Individual Rights did not have the right to tell her that she could not settle her own case. That was her decision. And now they want $115,000. Now, yes, usually we're talking about copyrights and things like that. But this, this right here, just like uh, Mika said, this is an issue of contracts. Somebody didn't explain, somebody didn't explain this to her. How are you the Center for Individual Rights providing free pro bono legal services and you are not advising your clients as to what the stipulations mean? This is one of the services that I provide because contracts can be tricky. They should have sat down with her and said, look, girl, this is how this works. We are willing to represent you for free. But if you do, if you win, you owe us some money. And at that point, it's not pro bono. It's contingency. But you represented yourself as a pro bono legal organization. So why would she think that she owes you anything? Right. But that's my opinion. So Trista thinks they're doing too much. Mika thinks they're doing too much. Um, Deirdre thinks they're going to doing too much. Is anybody here on the side of the pro bono legal organization? Do you think they're just trying to get their money back? They've been working on this case and this lady just settled for $10,000. Like is anybody on their side? I certainly am not. I feel like, you know, granted, I don't know the inner workings of a pro bono legal organization, but if you represent to someone that, Hey, I'm going to help you through this for free. And you make them think that it's free and then you try and give them a bill afterwards. That doesn't make any sense. And if the, and if your client, the client for your legal organization didn't understand the contract that they signed, that's your fault as a legal organization. You should have made sure that your client understood what their, what you representing them meant. Okay. So. I picked this one because there, there is a copyright portion with Arena having been sued by her landlord, but this is also, you know, a contract issue of understanding your contracts and being transparent. You should never sign anything that you don't understand. Um, it, if someone does not give you time to go over a contract, to read it, to make sure you don't, un to make sure you understand it, don't sign that contract. You should never feel like you don't know what's happening 
when you sign a legal document, okay? You should always feel confident that I understand exactly what I'm signing. I understand what my obligations are. Something happened here. There was a breakdown in communication between the Center for Individual Rights and ARENA, and now they're trying to, you know, get her for $115,000. I don't think this is right. Uh, hi, T. Onya. Uh, I don't think this is right. I hope that uh, Irina is able to, get, uh, to, you know, move past this. And in the future, the Center for Individual Rights needs to be more clear about, you know, the, the, um, the stipulations of their representing their clients, because this could put a lot of people into trouble. All right. Okay. So now that I've gotten on my soapbox, I'm going to, you know, step down and move on to our next story. Okay. All right. Uh, does anybody, has anybody here ever heard of University of Chicago? Um, I posted this question in, in my stories today. About 70% of you have heard of the University of Chicago. If you have heard of the University of Chicago, please give me a C in the comments. If you have heard of University of Chicago, please give me a C in the comments. And uh, as the name might, you know, let you know, it is an institution of higher learning. Okay. Um, nobody's heard of University of Chicago. I'm going to give Facebook a little bit more time because I know that it takes a little bit of time for you guys to come through, but for me, it was the first time I had heard of University of Chicago. I did not know that there was a University of Chicago, but cool. All right. Thank you, Trista. Trista knows what University of Chicago is. Has anybody here ever heard of barstool sports? If you have heard of barstool sports, please give me a B. Ball, ball, blah, 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 blah. Barstool sports is a pop culture um, is a pop culture blog, you know, and they talk about all things, you know, current and sports and lifestyle and things like that. Barstool sports. If you've heard of barstool sports, please give me a B. When I put this question in the stories, only about, I would say probably 40% of you, um, knew what barstool sports are. Zephyrina doesn't know what university of Chicago are or barstool sports you haven't heard of, okay that's cool all right let me tell you how university of chicago and barstool sports have have come to a head with each other okay so um barstool sports like i said they are a pop culture blog in january of 2019 they submitted a trademark application for the phrase the big brain it was supposed to be a web series and it was kind of like going to be like Shark Tank. There, there was going to be a panel of people who were going to hear business ideas from startups. And then, oh, it's okay, Deirdre. Um, but yeah, so in this web series, they were going to hear business ideas from startups and decide which ones they wanted to provide funding to. So essentially, they were creating their own uh, their own Shark Tank for Barstool Sports. It was going to be a web series, okay? Um and they filed that in January of 2019. Now, remember, when you file your trademark application, right, it takes about six months for the trademark office to get back to you to let you to tell, you know, is something wrong was going on. Hey, so in May of 2019, University of Chicago filed a trademark for the phrase big brains, not the big brain big brains. Um, and this was supposed to be for a university of, uh, for a podcast about scholars at the university of Chicago and the type of research they were doing. Okay. So, you know, so Barstool Sports submitted their trademark application for television and web series. University of Chicago submitted their application for a podcast. Okay. Uh, when University of Chicago submitted their application, the USPTO was like, what air girl, hold on. We can't really go forward with this because there are some issues here, including the fact that Barstool Sports has filed, uh, has already filed a trademark application for the phrase, the big brain. We are worried that there might be some overlap. Da -da 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 -da. So, uh, University of Chicago, they, they're going back with USPTO. They're trying to clear up their application. They're not having any luck. 
Um, and then they get a, a notice from the USPTO that uh, they were going to have their application suspended by uh, July 17th of 2020 because they had not cleared up the confusion aspect with barstool sports, right? So you, uh, University of Chicago, they didn't want to just lose out on this. They were intent on going forward with this podcast. So they went to Barstool Sports and they were like, hey girl, let's sit down and talk about this. What can we do? So they went back and forth and they were like, you know, look, you know, we're just trying to do a podcast over here. I understand you're trying to do your web series. How are we going to make this work? Now, what do you think happened between University of Chicago and Barstool Sports? What do you think the outcome is from University of Chicago and Barstool Sports trying to negotiate over the use of, you know, big brains? What do you think happened? Because, you know, they, they, they didn't want their application canceled. Barstool Sports was over there. They went there and they knocked on the door and they said, let's talk this out. What do you think happened? What y'all think happened? What y'all think happened? Nobody has an idea of what happened? Okay. I, I don't want to keep it um, too long because I know that people are waiting in podcast land. Uh, but basically, they came to a compromise. So Barstool Sports is going to be able to go forward with their um, with their with the big brain trademark. Um, it's actually been approved. So if you're into web series, you should probably look out for a web series from uh, Barstool Sports soon. Uh, Mika Douglas said they folded. Trista said Barstool wants one. No, y'all, they came to a compromise. Barstool Sports application has gone through, but they have excluded podcasts from the type of media that they're going to be using with that trademark. So University of Chicago, the, the, the podcast industry for big brains is up for grabs now. Now, University of Chicago, they still got to get the suspension lifted from the USPTO, but they were able to get Barstool to carve out an exception for podcasts so that university could take that and use it for the podcast that they plan to use for their university. So I picked this case because I wanted to show you guys that it's not always lawsuits. Sometimes you can just go sit down with somebody and come with uh with a solution particularly if um when it comes to intellectual property particularly if your products or services are not in the same category right you can come up with your own solutions it's not always up to the judge so let's say you're in a you know if you're ever in a pickle with another uh, business person who's not in the same industry with you and there's a little dispute over, you know, intellectual property, you guys can work that out between yourselves. You know, you'll maybe have to write up a couple legal documents, but it doesn't always have to go to court. So University of Chicago and Barstool Sports, they've come to a compromise. University of Chicago, they might have to reapply for um, big brands, but it's available for podcasts. And Barstool Sports is going to be able to go ahead with their web series. Uh, so congrats to them for being, you know, mature and being able to, to, to do this without, you know, spending thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, though I'm sure they spent thousands of dollars on attorneys. These are two very large organizations, but they did it without having to go to, Hey, Andrea, they did it without having to go to court, you know, and dragging it out and being all nasty. They came to a compromise. Okay. And that is one of your options, uh, when you are, confronted with intellectual property issues. It's not always a matter of running to the courthouse. Sometimes y'all just need to have a sit down and say, how are we going to work this out? Okay. All right. Moving on to our final story of the evening. But before we do that, I want to remind you that you are watching NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Thursday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. If you're in the startup phase of your business and you need a legal friend to help walk you through the perilous paths of, uh, you know, starting a business. That is what I am here to do. I'm a licensed attorney with 14 years of experience and I'm here to help you. All right. Go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm and see all the ways that you can connect with me. I cannot wait to hear from you. All right. Moving on to our final stories. All my photographers, give me a camera emoji, whether you are a professional photographer, amateur, or you just like taking pictures with your phone because you got a good camera. If you like taking pictures, Give me the camera emoji. 
Give me the camera emoji. Um, this story, it's I, it's more of an opinion story. I, I need to I need to see where you guys are at with this and see how you feel about this. So all my camera people, if you like taking photos, if you're a professional photographer, an amateur photographer, if you like taking pictures of your toes or, you know, whatever, give me a camera emoji. All right. Give me some camera emojis. I know y'all like taking pictures. I see all the pictures y'all post. Okay. Y'all, you love pictures. <laughs> Uh, okay. Thank you, Mika, for the camera emoji. All right. Um, so thank you, Deidre. All right. So as we know, you know, thank you, Sincere39. Yes. See, I knew this. I know y'all like to take pictures. I see y'all posting all day long. <laughs> um, yes. So as you know, because of social media and people's access to things. Thank you, Ms. Hayes Tax. Um, copyright infringement is rampant. People are always stealing photos. There's always some type of copyright claim. That's why things are, that's why there are always, um, you know, cases in the court over photographers suing, right? And Facebook is trying to take themselves out of the line of people responsible or being held responsible for copyright infringement. Um, Facebook is about, is, uh, about to institute something called Facebook rights manager. It's going to be a tool function where if you are a photographer, you can upload your photos that you take, um, as well as metadata to kind of, you know, give the, the, the imprint or whatever information that this is your photo and you can upload it into Facebook. Now this is done through, uh, upload metadata. I don't do computers. So I'm not exactly sure what metadata is. I think it's just identifying information. If any of you people do computers, if you or look up the official definition of metadata, please, your, your girl don't do computers. Your girl does legal. <laughs> okay. Um, but Facebook is basically saying, look, if you want to protect your pictures, Here's what we're going to do. We're going to give you this tool right here where you can upload your information and say, this is my photo, da, 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 take it on this date, da, 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 da. and then you're going to be able to kind of track where your picture is going. It'll create some type of tracking thing so you can see exactly who's using your photo. Do Can any of you guys see what issues might arise with something like this, with this self-directed tool through Facebook to protect your photos. Do you guys see any issues that could happen with this uh, kind of self-reporting system for your pictures on Facebook? <clears throat> you don't post pictures since the other night? Okay. Um, that's cool. That's cool. But do you? can you still see what might be a problem if I'm taking photos and I'm uploading them to Facebook and it's up, you know, and I'm uploading my metadata, you know, I'm saying that I took this picture on such and such a date at such and such a time. Da, 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 da. Does anybody, do you guys have any ideas what type of problems might arise with a self-directed system like this that isn't going through the copyright office, right? <laughs> any ideas? Okay, I'm gonna give y'all some time to write those in. But um, one of the one of the issues that I read in the article, um, Miss Miss Hayes text said, "I already hate the tagging feature, so I'm sure it will be more annoying." Look, Mark Zuckerberg is tired of going to Congress and having to put on a suit and talk to people, so he is trying to to cover all his ducks and put all his ducks in a row. Um, Mika Douglas said, "Lawsuits everywhere, harassment." Um, Deirdre Pollock said, yes, how will they determine if it was truly your photo first? Yes, they were saying in the article, metadata can be stripped. Metadata can be modified. So it's not a guarantee that these photos are going to be protected or it's going to be the person who actually owns the photos who's going to be uploading these. Very much, yes, I, there's going to be confusion. And there might be lawsuits. And think about all the memes that people create from copyrighted images. Are we now going to get copyright claims for memes? 
Um, while I understand where Facebook is coming from, because they don't want to have to be in charge of, you know, policing intellectual property on the platform. Uh, I do think that this has a propensity for causing more problems than it solves. I believe that, you know, people might file false, false ownership of photos. There could be, you know, really annoying and, you know, what do they call that? frivolous copyright claims over pictures that you don't own. Hey, Margaret, it's okay. You can um watch the replay when we're done. So those are just some of the issues that I think might arise from this. And here we have Deirdre said, well, Mika said lawsuits everywhere harassment. Right. Because you might, you know, you take a picture of your toe and then you see your toe on three different Instagrams and you're going to be like, give me some money. <laughs> right. Um, and Deirdre said, how will they determine if the photo was truly yours first? If I have the ability of stripping the metadata and I can kind of, and I'm a computer person who's able to, you know, make that stuff go away, you know, I can do a lot of damage. So while I respect Facebook's uh, attempt to try and protect people's intellectual property, we all know that this is for Facebook's benefit, right? Facebook does not want any more smoke with Congress, with Mark Zuckerberg hates wearing suits. He does not want to have to answer to anybody. That's why he quit college and started Facebook. He said, man, I'm rich. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> so he is trying to make it easier for, or his people try to make it easier for people, particularly photographers to protect their work online. But I, I just feel like this, this tool may cause more problems than it solves, but we will have to wait and see what happens between, uh, what happens with that. Okay. Um, Oh, wow. Time is going by really quick. Okay, so we are at the end of the show, but I wanted to talk about a couple of things really quickly. If you did not look at my stories today, there was a story that I posted from the fashion law. Um, I talked about it at the very top of the show. Guys, I talk about intellectual property because it's serious. Uh, if you know the brand Hermes, H-E-R-M-E-S, please give me an H in the comments. The brand Hermes. Uh, they are a luxury brand. Recently, they discovered a counterfeiting ring that was um, organized by several of their employees. Uh, these employees were taken to trial and they were given jail time, several years for counterfeiting. Thank you, Sincere39. Yes, they got jail time for selling knockoff Hermes uh, products. So when I talk to you guys about the importance of intellectual property, thank you for the H's, ladies. Um, I'm not just doing it to scare you. I'm serious. There are serious consequences to infringing on people's intellectual property. I see some of y'all out here making your Gucci domino sets and your, your Chanel charm bracelets, um, you know, and things like that. And I'm, I'm not saying this to, you know, get on you or pick on you. I'm saying this to help you. When you use somebody's intellectual property and you are making, making counterfeit items, you are opening yourself up to legal problems, okay? You don't want to go to jail. We are too pretty. We are too fine. We are too, look, no, ain't nobody got time for jail. So please, if you are a crafter or if you make items, be careful when using other people's intellectual property, okay? Hey, Dr. Obed Magni, and uh, just a final thing real quick that I'm going to talk about this tomorrow. They're trying to get my girl, Tracy Ellis Ross, for copyright infringement, and I'm not having it, but we are talking about that tomorrow. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me tonight. It's okay, Obed. You can watch the replay. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me tonight. Um, you know, Mondays are always a little bit hard. Uh, you know, I was a little bit tired when I came on here, but your participation just makes it so great. And I, I love coming on here with y'all. Make sure you go to Linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm and check out everything that's happening with me. Uh, we will be back here tomorrow night at 8 PM Eastern standard time with more stories. And if you find anything that you want me to talk about, please, please, please feel free to send it on. Okay, I love when you guys send me stories because sometimes, one, it confirms some of the stories that I want to talk about, and two, it lets me know things that I did not know about, okay? You have another meeting. All right, Deirdre, have a good night. Um, So join me tomorrow. I know I'm going a little over time, but that's okay. Uh, Y'all have a good night. Take care of yourselves, and I will talk to you tomorrow, okay? Bye. <laughs>